Stars were on the picket lines this weekend showing their support for the actor's strike. Susan Sarandon was out in New York City marching with actors. Also in New York, Jason Sudeikis was seen picketing outside NBC Rockefeller Center. Of course, that's his old home when he was on SNL. Now, Rosario Dawson joined the strike outside the Warner Brothers studio in Burbank, and Mandy Moore was with her This Is Us co-stars on the picket line, including Chrissy Metz, who played her daughter, Kate. George Clooney is also speaking out in a statement. He said, quote, actors and writers in large numbers have lost their ability to make a living for our industry to survive. That has to change. But... Media mogul Barry Diller told CBS he thinks both A-list actors and studio executives should have to take a pay cut. Watch this. Both the executives and the most paid actors should take a 25% pay cut to try <laughs> and narrow, narrow the difference between those who get highly paid and those that don't. Okay, so he's saying that, you know, the A-list 25 million plus actors should also take a pay cut, as well as these Netflix creators and all of uh, 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 CEOs, excuse me. Is this a distraction or does he have a point, Jeff? I think he's got a point. Talk to me. What do you Even think? Even though he's on, you know, I'm on the actor's side and all that. We've, we've discussed that last week. But there, there's a point to be had here. Wait, I, Jeff, are you saying that somebody on the side that you don't agree with can upset <laughs> that yeah, point? Yeah, I'm trying to okay, show buddy. the other side here okay, a little bit. Buddy. So when we're talking some CEOs, we used Bob Iger last week. He's a Disney CEO, right? He got, he was retired, brought that company to where it is went away and now they brought him back to bring it back to where right. it was because they slipped a little bit. He only makes 30 million and I think it's less than that a year. If you're paying out actors, that's a year. He's got a lot of things to do. He's working on every single thing. Uh, um, theme, uh, theme parks, yeah. movies, all, everything, everything that they put out, right? He's got to do. One person works on one movie for six months, they might make equivalent to $30 million. And that's just one movie. If they make 30 million here, 30 million here, 30 million here, why aren't some of the actors saying, hey, why are you making so much money? I know the flip side to that because they bring the numbers to the box office. If you have Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible, you're going to make more money as opposed to Jim Hansen, who nobody knows. I love Jim Hansen. He's, a, uh, he's up and coming. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? I, I see both sides, but everyone seems to be ganging up on the studio side. They need to make money, too. What my point is, is not just in the studio industry, but everywhere. Amazon, I used an example earlier. You need to bring the... I don't know why we have these multi, multi billionaires, almost trillionaires, but there's rumors going around that people are defecating in bags so they don't miss out on hours. Right. That doesn't equate to me. So we need to bridge that gap somehow. In every industry. Every industry, industry uh, I would say. Thoughts? Yeah, my, my thoughts are, uh, I agree with a lot. What you're saying makes sense, but I think we have to worry about like this, this uh, false equivalency because the difference between Bob Igar is he's guaranteed to work. Every, all year round. That's what Unless they fire their CEO for something that was social or Ab something he said 20 years ago. They can build an, an incredible golden pa parachute as well. Right. What we're talking about, you talked about last week, your friend that worked on Marvel movies yeah. and then, uh, you know, is now uh, waiting tables. And there's no shame in that. We've all done all that. All of us. But what we're talking about with these kinds of jobs is that they're not year round, Erica. You, how many famous actors have we seen where you go, whatever happened to what's the name? You don't know if this show is your last gig. You don't know if this writing gig is going to be your next one un uh, for another two years. You have to be able to sustain yourself to some uh, in, in some kind of way and it seems like they're just act asking for something equitable and I think what the conflation is when and they go well what's up with these A-list actors maybe they that's not the point nobody's worried about if George Clooney's going to be able to eat or if he's going to be heating up you know some noodles on the stove we're talking about the other 99% yeah. like in any other field most lawyers aren't making Johnny Cochran money everybody else we're all out here just trying to eat just trying to have a life mm. and bringing up that one percent out of every the Tom Brady's and the LeBron James. Yes, but it's like, what about that? Your brother played pro football for uh, for it, that's about the average length of a career. So these people should be able to sustain themselves, and that's really what the strike is about. So, listen, man, I have to go back for a second. You said Johnny Cochran money. I I couldn't think. I was going to say. <laughs> I was like, what's another rich lawyer? What's another? It just went by. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> caught it. I'm like, did he just say Johnny Cochran money? I, I might bring that back. Johnny Cochran type money. Next yeah. time I go to the store, I'm like, how much per pound for that fish? <laughs> what am I? What am I? <laughs> look like Johnny Cochran money over here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God.
Okay, okay. Speaking of Jeffrey being out there. <laughs> Woo! With the actors on strike, we oh, might be man. seeing more reality <laughs> TV shows hitting our screens. Case in point, the first ever Golden Bachelor is coming to ABC this fall. His name is Gary Turner. He's, I didn't know there was another he line. The government name out. <laughs> yeah, he sounds like it's made up. He's a 71-year-old widower from Indiana. Gary from Indiana. Uh, Gary <laughs> has two daughters and two granddaughters. His late wife passed away in 2017, and he told GMA what she would think of him being on the show. Watch Gary. I have her picture on a dresser in my closet. Every morning I give her the nod. So what do you think about this? For a while, it was like um, I was having a hard time figuring out if she would be okay. Mm -hmm. But we always told each other, when one of us goes, we want the other one to be happy. She's up there rooting. Mm -hmm. She's saying, yeah, Gary, do this. When he said do this, he really it broke my heart. Eric, what do you think? You think this is smart? That's I love question. this. I have been a fan of this concept right. since inception. When the casting was going around, I have a friend whose mother I thought would have been perfect <laughs> for this. And I was really into, like, getting her cast. She's on her own journey, and I respect that. Respect the journey. Um, oh but, you know, if you, I have really the privilege or the honor of my parents have been married for over 40 years. My husband's parents have been married for over 40 years. And there is this, like, life partnership that you see all the evolutions of. Not necessarily a family fairy tale, but you know, it's a beautiful evolution of, of, of the decision to make your life with someone else. And when you no longer have that for whatever reason, um, that's like one of my biggest fears. So the idea that like people get to a certain age and like the idea of finding a life partner is just over and diminished doesn't sit well with me. So I'm excited to see this because I think it's important that a lot of people feel like, oh, you know, my time is gone. And it's like your time hasn't gone. Right. Like, how do you know that there isn't? You think Gary thought that he was going to be the golden bachelor? Gary didn't think that. Two years ago. Gary had no idea Gary that was know. even a concept. Even know. And now all these people who are like Gary's age or could have gone to school with Gary are going to see this and be like, there might be somebody out there for me. I, I love that. That's lovely, I Erica. think you can take almost the word might out of that, Erica. It's so weird. We look at young people and we're like, go find your life partner. Go have your life. But, like, what are you doing if you're 20 and you hook up? You guys both have to work you, eat yourselves to death to build this, this nest egg for what's going to be your family. It's a lot of things pulling at you. When you're Gary's age or a little bit younger, you just retired, you got time now, you got a 401k, mm -hmm. you probably have a house you or maybe two. You You got perspective, you know what you like, what you don't want to do. It's like, there, and there's a lot of people that, you know, you sign up for this journey, but some people do pass away. Some people don't have a partner, but they're almost like a fully formed person now. And they should find somebody that's also at that great point in their life. So it's like, we should be like, there's definitely somebody out there for you. Rather than like at 20, you don't really know what you want yet. Yeah, I, I'm all for this, you know, like, because I thought this was the end for The Bachelor. I was ready to hate on this story until I saw Big Gare. Yeah. And, Gary. dude, he really, I, he won me over just in one little clip. And I think he's going to win over America. I think this might re give a resurgence to The Bachelor and Bachelorette. Right. Because I think, I think right. people are over it. There's more successful relationships from Big Brother, the show I was on, than there is The Bachelor Ooh. that's been on all those years. Gary wants to be there. Gary wants to find someone to be his lifelong partner, to look after his kids and grandkids. And he really wants to find somebody. I believe it from that clip. When I watch other clips of, hey, here's the new Bachelor, Bachelorette, I'm not buying it. No. You're on there to be in the cover of People magazine and use that as a springboard. I don't mind the plan, but it's just getting old. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, right. think about right. the lead-in to The Bachelor. What are the shows that are leading people into The Bachelors? Isn't it probably a better fit for people who are looking to that age group? Right. That golden bachelor right. age that they're, this might be a network that they never change the channel. They're actually right. watching it in real time yeah. on broadcast. Which is what that so, generation does. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. You know what? Gary? Gary's going to get married. Gary's going to get married. Gary. Absolutely. Way to go, Gary. I can't wait to meet the bachelorettes. Woohoo! I am 
I'm so excited. We, um, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Erica Perks. I am so excited. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, well, get great. excited about this because we're going to have a debate on this. Singer BB Rexa appears to have put her boyfriend on blast. Well, she did. She recently shared a screenshot of an alleged text message from her boyfriend criticizing her weight gain. So the message is long. This is a part of it. It says, quote, you gained 35 pounds. Obviously, you gained weight and your face changes. Should I pretend it didn't happen and that's okay? Come on, I gained three pounds and you call me chubs and fat. BB has also addressed being fat shamed online. She said it sucks, but it goes with the territory. Uh, Super Jeff boo. Yes. Yeah, Jeff Super and Al, you have a this. certain, I just Ooh. want to show I you I want to hear what Jeff has to say. Okay, but hold on. Wait. I just want to show you. This is the full text message. Okay. We use a lot of printer ink, but she posted that <laughs> out of context, just this with no other part of the chain. And the text message, if you go and read it, look it up yourself, it's lovely. It is. Beautifully. I don't know how you could put something more beautifully stated. Again, go read the whole text message. This is my problem with this thing. Yes. People are now, I hate this like revenge or if you're going through something bad and you're trying to shame the other person. Society is all about shaming someone else now. No responsibility for yourself that you have in anything. It's all about the shame on other people. The shame on BB Rexa. Okay, this guy wrote a lovely email saying, hey, people gain weight. I love you either way. Now we're going to the shame culture. Same as Jonah Hill last week with his ex-girlfriend. She's trying to shame him. I don't like this idea of barely having conversations anymore in society. Now I have to be worried about what I text you because if you take that out of context, mm. now I'm in trouble again. Mm. I don't like where we're going in society. No with conversation this at all. It, it, it's, it's playing off of a few things because we don't know either of these two people personally. And there's a reason. Tori, with your fingers, just show the, the, the part that she that she clipped okay and then so show it to just, the camera it's and just then, like from here to here yeah, it's so really the, the, really small the rest of that is what he wrote and it's lovely and, and it says i love you and i think that you're beautiful and how much i loved you and if you were to break up with me that makes sense but it's not the real reason your face did change but you asked me so i'm just trying to give a, a setup of what it was about it's and, and that's what this this was this was a setup if 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 i asked erica Erica, how do I feel? How do I look uh, with these glasses on as opposed to with a? And Erica gives me an honest answer, and I take her answer and then frame it in a way like, I guess uh, men can't be on camera with glasses. I guess black men and like going off these these yeah. tropes that are there for a reason, but framing in a way to be manipulative and to make Erica look like a terrible person. After I asked her a question, that is but that's to next be fair, level. Fat shaming for women is different than a right, man wearing glasses. Right, and she's playing off that. And she's, that's fair. That's I'm just my trying point. to bring that. Up. That's, That's my point. Fat shaming is a real thing. Right. And she's taking that real vitriol that should be there, and she's going after, she's using it to go after somebody that is apparently, according to that, has showed her a lot of compassion, mm -hmm. which, which makes it, it, it's a real knife turn Well, especially because she says, oh, when I gained three pounds and you call me chubs and fat, so she's showing that He she, said that. Right. She yep. fat shamed him. In this, in this text message. So love to hear what you guys think. Please write us because there is a lot of angles to all of this.